Welcome to Team G503. I am your host, Scott Schiller, and in this video, we're going to get a little greasy and dirty, so get your rags out and be ready to be getting messy and your fingers all grimy. But, you know, I'm using the gloves and stuff like that, but you're still going to get messy with this one. Getting kind of excited about what's going on here at the shop. I've got the 43 Willis MB down to a frame, and you've all seen the videos I've made in the past. It took about eight months to film everything and do everything that I've done, and I've got it all stripped down, and I've done step by step of what I've done to take it apart. Now we're going to get to the fun part. We're going to start putting it back together. But before I do that, I've got to disassemble the axles so I can rebuild them. So this video is all about the rear axle. We're not going to get into the differential and that sort of thing in this video. I basically want to show you in this one how to take apart the brake assemblies that are attached to the axle. So I hope you enjoy it. The rear axle on the 1943 Willis MB is a Dana 23-2. The axle is a full floating type, meaning the weight of the vehicle rests on two bearings inside the hub and the axle shaft is independent of the bearing system. To remove the axle shaft, I'll remove the six bolts that hold the flange to the outside of the hub. A feature on the full floating axle, which is a nice one, is if the axle shaft was actually to break, the wheel would not come flying off the vehicle or the axle. The six bolts have lock washers and they are part number A760. To break the seal from the flange to the hub, I'll give it a slight little tap with my saw face mallet. Holding the flange, you can pull outward on the drive shaft and remove it from the housing and the spider gear on the inside of the differential. Be careful not to damage the axle shaft when you remove it. The gasket is placed between the flange on the axle shaft and the outside of the hub. You see here this one's old and deteriorated, we'll be replacing that. The flange gasket is part number A904. The spindle nut holds the hub assembly onto the axle. This one is in good shape and no one's used a chisel to round the edges so it's not damaged. That's good news. I'll be using this special socket to remove the spindle nut. The spindle nut socket is part number A692. It is designed specifically for this use with this hub and is thin walled and makes this job really easy. Support the drum so it can't rotate and remove the spindle nut using the socket. Once you get it started it will come off by hand pretty easily. The spindle nut is part number A866. Using a magnet, I'll remove the first washer in the assembly, the part number is A867, and then remove the second spindle nut off the spindle. Pulling out slightly on the hub, I will be able to access the second bearing and the second washer inside. The second washer is slightly different from the outside one and is part number A865. The bearings are part number 52942. Remove the hub and the brake drum by pulling outward and off the spindle. With the brake drum removed, we can see our pads and our wheel cylinder and our spindle and our anchor pins on our plate and our spring. I'll start by removing the spring. I'll use a specific brake tool to remove the spring. This is a vintage one, but these are available at any automotive store. The brake spring is part number 637905. With the tension removed from the spring, I can move the brake pads out of the way and get a good look here at the wheel cylinder and the bolts that go through the backer plate and attach it to the axle. We'll move to the back side of the plate so I can show you how these items are removed. Here we have the brake eccentric, we have our anchor pins and nuts, and the bolts and the nuts that go through the backer plate and attach it to the axle and our wheel cylinder bolts. Using a ratchet and a socket, loosen the two bolts that hold the wheel cylinder onto the backer plate. Once the bolts are loose enough to be turned by hand, reach on the opposite side of the backer plate and hold the wheel cylinder and remove the bolts, being careful not to lose the lock washers. You can see here on the wheel cylinder where the bolts actually penetrate through and fasten it to the backer plate. The anchor pins that hold the brake shoes onto the backer plate actually have a machine surface here for a specific wrench to be put on them when you're adjusting them. Seeing that I've got the axle removed from the vehicle, I'm just going to use a socket and a ratchet to remove the nuts and remove the anchor pins from the plate and drop the brake shoes. If you'll notice here with my opposite hand, I'm holding the back side of the anchor pin. I've soaked these in a penetrant catalyst for about a week and the nuts are coming off very easily. I would not recommend grabbing the backside face of the anchor pin with any sort of tool. If you have to apply extra force to remove the anchor pin, I would recommend using the specific tool on the flat surface area and an offset wrench. The anchor pins are machined specifically to accept a brass cam. If you'll notice here, the inside of the cam is offset. I'll get more specific in how that functions when I actually reassemble the brakes. Remove the top anchor pin and then you'll be able to remove the top brake pad. 
I wanted to show you a front side shot of the anchor pins and the plate that holds the brake pads on. The brake pads also rest in these two tabs that are part of the brake backer plate. Now I can remove the six nuts and bolts from the backer plate to the axle and remove the plate. You see here there's a bolt, a nut, and a lock washer. I'll place all the fasteners in a Ziploc bag and clean them up and reuse them when I reassemble the plates to the axle. With all the nuts and bolts removed, remove the backer plate from the axle, sliding it over the spindle. I've left the two adjusting eccentrics on the backer plate and will remove those on a block of wood. The spindle seems to be in really good shape. I don't see any major pitting, scratching, or any sort of corrosion on it. I do have a little bit of corrosion on the outside flange here of the actual axle house casing, but this will clean up nice and is definitely serviceable. These are the brake eccentrics. They're used in adjusting the brake pads when we reassemble. You don't want to damage this machine surface, this round surface, as it plays a vital role in adjusting the pad. To remove the eccentrics from the plate, I'm just going to use a small crescent wrench to hold the flat spot of the back side of the eccentric in a wrench. If this was on the actual vehicle, I would use a specific wrench to hold the flat spot and an offset wrench to remove or adjust the nut. I'm just removing these from the plates and so you see here I've got the nut and the washer in the actual eccentric and did not damage the flat face surface. We'll get into proper brake adjustment in a future video, but for now I'll just put these away and clean them up. Next up, we have our brake drum. On the back side of the hub, you will see a seal. The seal part number is A864. I'll be using a seal puller to pull the seal out of the hub. I'll simply stick one end underneath the lip of the seal and gently work my way back and forth around until the seal pops away from the inside of the hub. I'm pressing the back side of the seal removal tool against the opposite side of the seal, and as you see there, it just popped right out. And we can look inside the hub now and see the second bearing. The bearing is the same part number as the front side. Using a rag, I'll clear the grease away from the inside of the cup, or what some folks call a race. I was kind of brought up with the race word, and you see here, this is where the face of the bearing rolls on the inside of the hub. You've got one on either side of the hub itself. Now to remove these, there's a little trick. We'll clean up the grease here on the inside, and I'll point my finger down in here, and I'll try to get the camera in close, but there's two machined areas that are voids in the actual hub. You can see them there. I'll be using a brass drift to catch the lip side of that race and tap it out. Here I'm using a brass drift and a hammer. I'm not hitting it very hard, just tapping on either side, going back and forth with equal amounts of taps. This will apply both pressure on both sides evenly and will not allow the race to get jammed inside the hub. I'll flip over the hub here and you can see the race has popped out. I'm working on a piece of 2x12 just so I don't damage anything while I'm working on this. I'll flip the other on the opposite side and I'll remove the opposite race in the same manner. I'll be replacing these races and cups with very high quality replacement parts. The disassembly on the opposite side or passenger side of this axle is only different with the axle shaft being slightly longer. The disassembly is the same. It's now time to clean up a bunch of parts and paint them and I'll take the brake drums and the hubs over to a brake shop and have them checked and maybe resurfaced. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to subscribe to Team G503 on YouTube, you can see the archive videos from when we first got the 43 Willis MB here at the shop and the progress we're about to make in the future. It's about to get exciting. Once again, thank you to Ron Fitzpatrick and Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. Until next time, keep it safe and happy jeeping.